regálame un porro para bailar y tócame un porro para gozar. Eso mismo, dice la gente cuando. Andrew's on a hunt for good shots for his video and photography campaign. Wow. So, babe. Yes. You said that you only want to walk very short distance to the nearest coffee shop. What <laughs> happened? Uh, Via de Leva happened. This place is absolutely beautiful, magnificent. It's hard to just go for a walk because you keep seeing things, you keep going. It's very interesting and also very romantic. It is very romantic. And what we realized is that we actually, you know, we've been to like the, so far we've been to the party cities that are like more uh, happening and more well known. And then we now we're in like very not well known place. And I think we like the lesser known places that are cheaper that people don't know about. I would agree. And way cleaner and safer. And more doggos. More doggos, yes. Way more doggos. Yes. What's up, you guys? So, I keep telling myself that I'm gonna like wear a new outfit, change. I've been wearing the same outfit every day and this t-shirt that I'm wearing underneath, it's $5 from Walmart. My leggings are like maybe 10 or $12 um, from Amazon and I wear the same thing, but I, it's really comfortable, so I love it. And I, I kind of like, I wish everything was this comfortable, but I'm thinking maybe, now that I have more time to relax and think about art and think about life, maybe I should try new styles and stuff like that. Uh, that will fit in my suitcase. I obviously can't carry a whole wardrobe around. But um, yeah, I'm still in Via de Leva and I'm still making these Off the Derach videos um, because it's still part of my 30 minute commitment, 30 day commitment. I was. Uh, I committed to my friend Kiara as part of our like accountability arrangement that I'm gonna do off the derach videos for 30 days straight and see how that goes. And it's like I'm still learning how to fit that into my regular vlogging style. But anyway, um, today I wanted to talk about life and purpose and meaning of life when you go off the derach. So a few days ago, I was actually, uh, we were in a, a coffee shop and it's like this really beautiful, like hipster style coffee shop in Via de Leva in this little town in Colombia that we're in and very cute. Um, I, I think I showed you a clip where, uh, you know, Andrew was taking videos or pictures and there's a little dog sleeping next to us. <laughs> just very quiet and nice and there was a book that I was reading called the meaning of life and it was actually written by a holocaust survivor and he talks about as a holocaust survivor who saw all these things and this book was written Victor Frankl was the author he wrote it many years ago and then they it was like a new rendition or whatever of the book he talks about three uh things that give people meaning in life the first thing is just moving forward, just doing things and not limiting yourself, just constantly moving forward, uh, moving on to the next thing, moving on. And even if you don't know what your, what your meaning in life is, if you just keep moving and keep doing things, you're gonna figure it out. The second thing is love. Love drives people to have a certain meaning in their life and do things they care about. And the other thing is suffering. And uh, so when people suffer, that gives them meaning in life. And that's why a lot of times you'll, you know, you, you'll meet people that have succeeded hugely in, in certain things. They become activists or politicians or they become super wealthy and whatever. And you ask them like, you know, what drove you to have this great amount of success or build this great skill, you know, and it's usually, and it's not usually, but it's often a uh, trauma that they had. You know, a lot of Holocaust survivors went on and created these huge, beautiful lives, had many children, had just enormous wealth, success because uh, suffering drove them to not want to have that anymore, not want to be stuck anymore and experience that 
um, that kind of trauma. But anyway, not to get too much into that book that I read, but uh, I've had a lot more time here in this very sleepy, very quiet, very slow moving town to reflect on the meaning of life. And uh, it's a little weird to have so much time to do that. Like it feels like I feel guilty because I'm like, oh, I should be doing something. And I'm, you know, I'm used to the fast paced American lifestyle where I'm constantly doing things. And, and then nearby around me, there's just people just relaxing and playing ball, swimming, or, you know, not really swimming, but uh, today, because it's kind of cold today, but um, there's people just chilling, not doing anything. And even the Westerners that we meet in this town, there's not a lot of Westerners. There's maybe like two or three other Westerners that we're meeting. They're just so relaxed. They're just like, yeah, they want to hang out. They want to just chill. They want to, they're not, they're not looking to work all day the way that we're doing. We're working all day. And, and you know, by working, I mean, you know, like renewing my real estate license online and studying for that and going through properties, real estate properties and underwriting them, constantly going through stuff, uh, working on other business ventures, setting up an LLC for another, like a cleaning company that I'm working on in the US, cleaning and rental, uh, vacation rental, like a, a furnishing company and like just all these like little things that I'm doing um, that and I'm just like, even though I'm doing those things, I still feel like I have so much time here because we're not driving anywhere. We're not, you know, breakfast, like we're, we're eating out. So we're not preparing our own breakfast. And uh, actually the breakfast is free in this place that we're staying in. And we're still, it's so cheap that like, we're still eating out. Like this morning, for example, uh, $2.72 was our breakfast. And it consisted of a uh, hot chocolate mocha coffee and freshly squeezed orange juice and um, fried medium eggs with sausages and uh, oh my god this delicious arepa which is like this corn patty with cheese and it. it's so good it's like heaven it's like eating heaven a piece of heaven and marmalade and uh oh my god like what else came with it it was like it was just like oh and then they also gave us like this um envuelto it's like this it's kind of like a tamale but the colombian version which is sweeter and it's very sugary but yeah it was just so such a nice filling breakfast and walk, going for a walk and even doing all these things it's just everything it's just small town everything is so close we still have so much time and it just feels weird it feels uh I feel guilty like I and it's also causing us to be and act and move slower and so I'm also just less on my game <laughs> with these videos because I'm just so like meditative and uh it's just weird it's different but the thing is like that was my goal that was my goal in life was to get to this point find ha find enough freedom to be able to sit with myself with nobody telling me what to do no obligations to anybody just being free and feeling free to be able to sit down and think about what my purpose in life is and that that's what I wanted. I wanted enough time to be able to do that. And yeah, and there's other things going on, you know, tenants, you know, tenants. But the other cool thing about my tenants is that the more I invest in my properties, the more I, energy and time I put into making them better and the more money I spend on them, like, you know, fixing different things, improving the quality of certain things, the better the tenants get because the more money I can charge. And so I just become more relaxed that way too because the quality of people that are coming in the door are high, higher quality people. You know, when you charge more money for things, you get people that are not treating your property like shit anymore because their, their, their money is at stake because they're spending so much money to be there. And so um, that's something that I'm learning a lot when I'm looking at other properties is like maybe I, maybe I do want to wait a little bit more before spending 
uh, investing in another property. Maybe I want to wait until I can invest in a higher earning property. And that's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about maybe, uh, you know, so there's just so many things that I want to do. And um, for so long, I just felt, I just felt like in survival mode because I just didn't feel free. I felt like I had, you know, I was dependent on my family. You know, I was dependent on my community, the community that I was from. Uh, as a religious person, I didn't really know how to operate outside of that community. So I felt very dependent on that community. And so in order to survive, I always felt like I had to be go-go doing the things that people in that community community expected me to do, expected how they expected me to be, and constantly being devoted to those people and those ideas that I didn't actually care about personally. I didn't care about any of it. Maybe now that I have so much time and freedom to myself outside of that community, outside of like that bubble, I might actually come to love and enjoy some of those things in the, in the religious community that I grew up in because I'm not bound to it and I'm not obligated to it at all. And maybe I'll sit down and like ponder the meaning of kosher and decide that I don't want to touch bacon anymore because it'll touch me on a personal level. It'll touch me from love and not obligation. And uh, that's basically what my goal was until now. And uh, a lot of people, when they go off the derech, and the same thing happened with me is, is because when you grew up in such a very religious lifestyle your whole life and uh or, you know or a very tight community and not to knock on the community it's always going to be like this even when you're a kid you're going to have some level of this even if you didn't grow up religious but uh when when you grow up with such a cocoon that you are constantly maintaining and being a part of then when you step out of it, it is sometimes it's scary because you don't know what, what your identity is and you're trying to like discover who you are without the thing that told you who you are your whole life. And so that's how it's been for me going off the derrick, leaving the religious community. Now it's like, okay, Pardis, you're free to discover who you are on your own. When you've spent enough time with yourself in your own element, free from obligations, free from immediate obligations so you have you know some more time to think about like what the purpose in life is just that act that act of being able to do that is means that you've already won that is your purpose in life your purpose in life when you go off the dara your purpose in life as an ex orthodox Jew or your purpose in life as an ex any kind of religion or any kind of ideology or ex-atheist or whatever your the ideology that you were locked into before the purpose of life when you leave that is to be able to feel free enough to like sit with yourself and wonder what is my purpose in life because when when you're starting to ask yourself that that's when you know that you're free and you've already made it that's your purpose in life and so now you you're free to think about what you like and what what you care about in life and uh you know my friend my friend kiara and i we've been talking a lot about religion she's got you know she's making videos about religion and uh the, she's basically making videos about uh you know cross-examining different ancient religions with each other and i'm really excited for her to start t uh publishing those videos because i think that's going to be really exciting for people to see but um Anyway, thanks you guys for following me. And uh, I'm gonna try to take more videos of my surroundings, but I'm just feeling really relaxed right now. And so bear with me if it takes a while for me to get back on like the travel vlog horse. <laughs> okay, see you guys later.